Hi friends. So welcome back. This is what my husband likes to call the Christmas village because I do have my stockings on this side and on this side, you can't really see them, but I'll show you real quick. Those are my dog stockings. Yeah, we have that many animals in our family. They're not all mine. They don't all live with me, but they are my son's, they're animals. So they get fair treatment in our house as well. So, um, so welcome back to the Christmas village. Um, I have on today, it's a little high, but I have on today my Temple University stuff because this past weekend I didn't get to, a chance to tell you that I also went to the first Temple football game that she got to dance at. Now, the Temple football team, not very good. they're not very good this year, but the dance team was phenomenal. So my niece was really super and I'm really proud of her. So good job, Becca. So we're going to go through the morning meeting. I also wanted to talk to you about something that I didn't get to talk to you about yesterday either. There, we, we kind of had some, some issues yesterday getting people on and people were on at different times and it was a little bit crazy. But um, over the weekend, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were pronounced the, the winners of the new election. So in January, they will be inaugurated as the president and the vice president of the United States. And the only thing I'm going to say about that, I don't want to hear anybody's political views or, and I'm certainly not trying to start anything, but I am thrilled and, and um, elated that little girls all across the country can finally say that uh, a girl is in the White House. So I am extremely proud of Kamala, uh, regardless of what your political views are. I mean, you have to be really impressed that everybody now knows that when I say you can be anything you want to be, you know that I am so serious, right? You can be anything you want to be. Okay, so here we go. This is a little bit, I don't know if you can even see the top. There we go. I'm just going to move it up a little bit so you can see the top. Okay, so it says, good morning, silly squirrels. <gasps> so yesterday when we were talking about trees, we talked about the parts of trees and we talked about, um, we did the little song. Yeah, roots and trunk, branches and leaves, right? We did a little song. We're going to do that song again today. So of course, if you missed it, you can come on back. But then we started talking about who lives in a tree. Like, what do we, what do we need those trees for? Who lives in a tree? And my genius friend, Evelyn, said that birds, and she started making a nest for us to show us, right? So that, she is absolutely 100% correct. I'm going to move to this side real quick. Um, she's 100% correct. Birds do live in trees. All different kinds of birds live in trees. So today, we're going to find out what Evelyn thinks that kind of bird is. But then other other children, Micah and Micaiah were on also when they were talking about different animals that live in trees. So I want you to be thinking about that as well. So I gave you a little big, big hint, right? Squirrels, squirrels live in trees, correct? Especially um, trees around here. We have tons of squirrels living around here. So squirrels live in trees. Um, I also gave you these silly squirrels because that is alliteration, right? All right, so here we go. Today is Tuesday. Uh, we made it through Monday. We made it through, we're on to Tuesday. Your seesaw activities for today will look very similar to the ones yesterday. They will be opposites. Again, remember the opposite of up is down, the opposite of in is out, the opposite of left is right. So uh, be thinking about that. You want the, the, the word relationships, right? We want to figure out how those words are connected and how they are the opposite, like short, tall, or small, big. Those are opposites, all right? So I want you to be thinking about those. That's what your seesaw activities are to practice, all right? Now, we're going to talk about this rhyme. First of all, this whole thing is like a, it is a poem. Um, I want you to notice, listen close, for the words in here that rhyme. 
Remember, rhyme is when the second half of the word sounds the same, like fat cat, right? This, when the first letter is the same or the letter sound is the same, that's alliteration. When the second half of the word sounds the same, like fat cat, that is rhyme. So I want you to be listening. <laughs> There's lots of words in here that rhyme, not just at the end, because lots of times when we hear poems, the words that rhyme are at the end, but also at the beginning. Hmm. So think hard and listen hard. And when you pop on at nine o'clock, I want you to be thinking about the rhyming words that you heard, the rhyming words. All right, ready? Furry, furry squirrel. Hurry, hurry, hop. Scurry up the treetop to the very top. When you reach the branches, hurry, turn around. Furry, furry squirrel, scurry to the ground. What? All right, let's listen again. Furry, furry squirrel, hurry, hurry, hop. Scurry up the treetop to the very top. When you reach the branches, hurry, turn around. Furry, furry squirrel, scurry to the ground. You hear any rhyming words in there? First of all, it's a cute little rhyme anyway, right? So we can, we can actually picture that, right? If you closed your eyes, you could actually picture a little squirrel scurrying up the tree and then hanging out at the top of the branches and then turning around, scurrying back down the tree. Scurry means to quickly move. So that is a really, um, that's a fun rhyme anyway, right? Furry, we can just imagine it's a cute little fluffy squirrel. Not that I want you touching squirrels outside because we don't know what they, <laughs> we don't know about those and we don't want to get accused of anything. So <laughs> please don't touch the squirrels outside. However, this is a cute rhyme. So I want you to think about what rhymes and I'm going to give you a hint. So sometimes the rhymes are at the end, like hop and top and actually treat top as well, right? Hop, top. Hmm. So if I was thinking of another word that would rhyme with those, I could think of mop, stop, right? Because the second half of the word sounds the same. That's what makes it rhyme. So there's also some at the beginning of the poem. Hmm. So I really want you to be thinking about that. Also, when you pop on, super important, what lives in trees? So we know that Evelyn told us yesterday, birds, if you have a specific kind of bird, like a blue jay or a cardinal that you want to talk about, then, then use that one as your example. It's okay that she already said birds. You can say something similar. Like you could tell me about some other birds. Um, and then I gave you squirrels. So you can't use squirrels again because I already gave you squirrels. So I want you to pop on and I want you to think about some animals that live in trees. Okay? Got it? All right, so you're gonna give me some rhyming words and we're gonna talk about that. If you can think of another rhyming word with mop and stop and top, oh, that would be fabulous. So think about that too maybe. Some words that rhyme and they have that op sound at the end. Those are not the only rhyming words in this, in this poem. I want you to look for the other rhyming words. So we're gonna go over this again. When you jump on, we're going to sing the tree song. Yeah, roots. Trunk, branches, leaves.